Hi, this is Mark Graven. This is episode 256 of Lean Blog Audio. This is a post that I published on April 17th, 2018, titled Leaders and Lean, We Need to Better Support Doctors and Other Providers. So when coaching people in healthcare, I often find myself saying something about the role of leaders in creating systems that meet the needs of patients and staff. I was reminded of a post uh, from this week four years ago, which I've linked to, you can find this blog post at leanblog.org slash audio 256. There was a post from four years ago, I went through notes from a 2007 Lean Healthcare Conference where John Shook said, in part, people should be comforted and supported by the system. A variation on the same theme comes from my friend Daryl Wilburn, a, a former Toyota leader I know from San Antonio. Daryl said at a conference, it's the responsibility of leadership to provide a system in which people can be successful. So I think there we see the influence of the late W. Edwards Deming, the influence he had on Toyota. Deming said quality is made in the boardroom. And he taught that senior leaders are responsible for the system. I mean, people can only perform within the bounds of a system. Each system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. You know, we learn this from the Red Beat experiment, and from the world around us if we pay attention. But you know, too often I see leaders pressuring staff to do better, asking them to work harder in a fundamentally broken system. Now, as powerful as small scale staff-driven Kaizen can be, you can only get so far by continuously improving a system that needs to be completely redesigned. So recently I saw a surgeon's complaint, I think a valid complaint on LinkedIn, as you can see, uh, in the post I've linked to here, Dr. Vinod Dasa, an orthopedic surgeon, wrote, had a big case scheduled for Monday, approximately three to four hours long, patient is in a nursing home. Nursing home never did any of the pre-op labs or tests, so had to cancel the case. Now there's a big gaping hole in the OR schedule, and all the patients that could have had surgery during that time can't, and all the implants and instruments that are ordered are now sitting idle. No repercussions or accountability, just pure waste. I think sharing and risk and bundles will help align the stakeholders and incentivize people to pay attention. So I think it sounds pretty factual for him to point out that there's waste. You know, there's idle time, there's delays. That's something that a healthcare organization should work to address. But I noticed that Dr. Dasa is blaming a different organization. You know, many of our healthcare value streams, if you will, or we, we could call them end-to-end -end patient journeys, go across organizational boundaries and silos. There are often disconnects and problems that occur even when different silos are in the same building and under the same organizational banner. So without talking about why these problems occurred, it's interesting to me that Dr. Dosich suggests that repercussions or accountability could be countermeasures. I mean, it sounds like he means punishing somebody or threatening punishment. Many of the LinkedIn comments talked about blame and quote unquote accountability, including people who said things like, well, if you want them to have accountability, ask someone in your office to report them, uh, CYA, cover your, you know. Uh, people blamed misaligned incentives, uh, calling for quote, painful regulatory consequence for the long-term care facility for not getting up off their rear ends, unquote, as if the long-term care, uh, the nursing home facility was being lazy. Someone else asked, why don't you hold your own office accountable to ensure the proper pre-testing was completed earlier in the week? Someone else said, your surgery scheduler should have caught that. So all of that prompted me to write on LinkedIn. It's amazing how many people still think punishing individuals leads to quality improvement. If that were true, healthcare would be pretty much perfect by now. Punishment leads to fear, hiding of problems, deflection of blame. None of that leads to improvement. The norm in healthcare over time has been what people call naming, blaming, and shaming. You know, those behaviors haven't fixed healthcare. I asked Dr. Dasa a question on LinkedIn in response to his post. I asked Dr. Dasa, what did you or one of your team members do to follow up with the nursing home or your staff to understand the root cause of the problem? Now, I don't mean I expected him to fix it, but he's at he, uh, what Toyota might call the point of occurrence. He's observing and detecting the problem. He or his staff should have a channel and a mechanism for reporting the problem. 
it would be the equivalent of a Toyota assembly line worker, quote unquote, pulling the and on cord when there's a problem. Because at a Toyota plant, pulling the cord or, or sometimes pushing a button leads to an almost immediate response. There's a team leader and if needed, other people available to help improve the process. They'd work to understand why the problem occurred instead of asking who messed up. And they'd work to improve the process in a way that prevents future problems. Some healthcare organizations have internal, if you will, lean teams or process improvement facilitators who can help in such situations. But improvement won't happen without one, a way to speak up, two, a timely, helpful response, three, improvement coaches who would be there to help, not to take away responsibility for improvement, and four, freeing up time for healthcare professionals to participate in improvement work. So Dr. Dosser replied uh, to my question, what did he do? He said, nothing. We're swamped managing the next 50 patients who also need our undivided attention have a number of MRIs, lab surgeries, we're trying to keep on track. Now, like I said, I don't expect Dr. Dasa alone to fix the system, but it seems clear that nobody is asking him to speak up about such problems that affect him and his patients. Uh, I mean, he took the venting on LinkedIn, which doesn't really fix anything. So somebody asked if there was a root cause analysis being done and Dr. Dasa wrote, doubtful, too much other stuff we have to worry about. Unless there's direct harm and risk for a lawsuit, no motivation for root cause analysis. We've already moved on to the dozens of other surgeries we need to get cleared. So that situation reminds me of an expression. It's a, a thought I learned from others. You get what you expect and you deserve what you tolerate. When organizations tolerate waste like this, they're going to get more of it. Dr. Dasa also added, I won't get tired, not yet, of complaining because the only way to fix it is to bring it to light. Well, I'm not sure bringing the problem to light always leads to fixes. I mean, complaining on LinkedIn doesn't help. It's sad that he might not get a helpful response if he raised the issue internally. The whole discussion made me think of something Captain Obvious might say uh, in a TV commercial. If we don't fix things, things will never get better. And again, this isn't Dr. Dasa's fault. His organization and his leaders seem to be failing him. He wrote, we have process improvements up to our eyeballs. I can't keep track the flavor of the day, hospital process improvement QI initiative we have going on. But are these efforts effective? If so, are there just too many problems to solve all at once? So thinking back to the Wilburn quote, is management creating a system in which Dr. Dasa can be successful? In John Shook's words, is the system comforting and supporting him and his patients? So I want to also add, as I've linked to in the blog post, um, leanblog.org slash audio 256, our friend and legendary toast guy, Bruce Hamilton, um, he blogs um, under uh, the banner of Old Lean Dude, wrote a post on his blog about his recent time in the hospital, and he titled the post, Who Cares for the Caregivers? Uh, it's a great blog post with examples of how problems get normalized instead of getting fixed. And again, that's not the fault of the caregivers. Bruce ends the post with wise words. Your caregivers are the most valuable resource. Management's job is to create an environment in which the things that get in the way of the work are exposed and corrected, enabling caregivers to fulfill their missions with more time and greater focus on making the patient well. So I encourage you to go and check out the post there. If you want to see my post, you can go to leanblog.org slash audio 256. If you'd like to subscribe um, to this as an audio podcast, you can go to leanblog.org slash audio. You can find the post on Apple Podcasts, um, any place basically you would normally find podcasts. And if you're watching the video here on YouTube, I'm curious what you think of this experiment. I managed to read uh, the post uh, all in one take, which uh, maybe that's just a matter of, uh, of luck. I've had a lot of coffee this morning. Maybe um, a lot of times when I'm just, when I've been reading the blog post as audio, I, uh, I mess up, I go back and edit. That's harder to do with video. So I'm glad I pretty much made it through um, without stumbles. Um, so again, thanks for uh, watching. I encourage you to go check out um, the content on my blog, leanblog.org. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and I hope you find um, all of this interesting and helpful. Thanks.